All right, so we were asked to use the fundamental identities to get an equivalent expression using sine and cosine. Macy, tell me a Pythagorean identity we can use in this problem. Okay, uh, pick one, numerator, denominator. Look on your formula sheet. What is a Pythagorean identity that has this? To have your formula sheets right next to you. We'll come back to you, Macy. Enoch, how about you tell me a Pythagorean identity that has this one? So every time I see 1 plus cotangent squared of an angle, we're not going to write that. We're going to write... What do we write, class? Cosecant squared. The angle is alpha. Okay? And Macy? Thank you, Hinoch. I need a Pythagorean identity that has sine squared. Edwin? Give me the identity. Yeah. Tell it to me. Now, if you look at this identity, it says 1 minus sine squared. Class, how can I match that over here? What would I have to do? We would have to subtract sine squared. That means we would get cosine squared of an angle equals 1 minus sine squared of an angle. Class, instead of writing 1 minus sine squared, we're going to write what? Cosine squared of an angle. And our angle is alpha. Cosine squared alpha. There we used two Pythagorean identities. The yellow one was just a straight substitution. And the pink one is a variation. This one was a difficult one, the pink one. Some students ask me, Mr. Ring, how do you know when to use an identity? Well, if you look at it, anything with a power of 2 and a 1 in it should tell us about the Pythagorean identities. Okay, let's separate our fraction now. Cosine squared alpha. Class what math symbol is this one? Division. So let's change that to a big division sign. Divided by cosecant squared alpha. Let's make these fractions. That might help us. So I have cosecant squared alpha over 1 divided by... Class, how can I make that a fraction? I need another identity. Talk to your partner. Crystal? And what is the reciprocal identity you're using? Uh, cosecant is equal to what? One over... Cosecant theta equals 1 over 
sine of theta. Now, you might be asking, is it the same? Well, if you just put two of these together, do you see how it's basically the same? So we're using the reciprocal identity of writing this as 1 over sine squared theta. There we're using the reciprocal identity. If you took away the fraction there, there's a substitution. Okay? And let's now take care of that fraction. What does that turn into, class? Turns into multiplication. And what do you do with the second fraction? Switch them. So now I have cosine squared alpha times sine squared alpha. Oh, that should have been alpha. And this is not the Pythagorean identity because you don't have addition here. So if you're multiplying, it's, um, it's the same thing. D nothing changes. There's no other identities, and that's our answer. A lot of students will ask in the past, they'll say, Mr. Ring, when do I know when to stop? Well, that'll be today's lesson when we actually verify the identities. 